Okay, welcome to video three of this series we're doing on negative interest rates. Today we're going to talk about the Federal Reserve and we're actually going to split it into two parts. But before I do, I just want to make a couple comments. Number one, you can see these themes that we are covering throughout this series, debt overhang, deflation, we can't grow out of it, negative interest rates, and a currency war. And there's a common thread that goes through these themes and that common thread is the word control. And it, this thread not only goes through these themes, it also goes through the world, through all the governments, all the central banks, from Japan, China, Europe, and to the United States shores. The negative interest rate concept is a global issue, and it ultimately leads to this currency war, which is how we're going to wrap all this up. Now, in talking about the Federal Reserve, you're going to hear some things that are going to be difficult to accept and probably disturbing. Our challenge in doing this series is to try to get a handle on how this stuff affects our economy and impacts your investments. Because after all, that's why we're educating and doing this together. We're an investment firm, we manage your money. One thing we know for sure is negative interest rates or the experiment of negative interest rates can certainly create trends in the market, whether it's an uptrend or a downtrend. Most of you only make money when the markets go up and you get killed in the downs, the 2008s and so forth. Our platform is designed to actually make you money in an uptrend or a downtrend. I've done plenty of videos and you can certainly contact us on how that works. But I just wanted to give that disclaimer because as we go through this information, as frustrating as it is, the tendency will be to just to throw in the towel and say, geez, you know, is there any way out of this? And the answer is yes, of course there's a way out. My job, our job is to perform whether the markets are going up or whether the market's going down for your investment portfolio. So in preparing for this video, I realized that on the Federal Reserve, it's just too thick to go through in one video. So we're going to break it up into two. The first part is going to focus on foreign influence. And the second video is going to focus on the actual formation of the Federal Reserve. So to set this up, let's watch a quick video clip. And now for the news. Under heavy security, the crop estimates for next year's orange crop are being delivered from Miami to the Department of Agriculture in Washington, D.C. Louis! Louis, that's him! That's the guy who paid me to talk dirty to you! In charge of security is Mr. Clarence Beeks, head of Lindhurst Security. Clarence Beeks! The Duke just gave that guy ten grand! Ten grand? I saw an outlay on the payroll to him for fifty thousand. Mortimer said it was for research. Yeah, research and I can get his hands on that top secret crop report two days before it goes public. My God, the Dukes are going to corner the entire frozen orange juice market. Unless somebody stops them. Or beats them to it. Eggnog. We want you to buy as much OJ as you can. The instant trading starts. Don't worry if the price starts going up, just keep buying. But gentlemen, they're going to broadcast a crop report in an hour. What if they're... Let us worry about that, Wilson. Yes, sir. Now, the Duke's trader is going to be buying like crazy right from the opening. And we wait until he drives the price up. Right. I can't wait to see his face when they broadcast that genuine crop report. Hey, hey, the Dukes are trying to corner the market. They know something. I can feel it. Let's get in on it. 200, take them. 130. 200, 200. Lewis! Not yet. Almost. 220, take him! 209! Yeah, yeah, got him! In there! 139! 140! Hey, come in, come in! Let me have this thing! Now! South Dorn and April 142! be going down. Something's wrong. Where's Wilson? What are they doing here? They're selling, Mortimer. Well, that's ridiculous. Unless that crop report... God help us! Ah! OK, 
Okay, so obviously a bit of fiction there, but you know the old saying that truth is better than fiction. Did something like that happen? Well, you bet it did, and it actually happened June 18th, 1815. You see, France and England were at war. And it should come as no shock to you that there are large family fortunes that profit from the act of war, and and one in particular was the Rothschilds. Because you never know which side's going to win, the Rothschilds were adept at financing both sides. Not only did they provide gold and materials, but they had a very sophisticated courier service to transfer information as well as goods throughout the European theater. Now there's just one problem. Napoleon wasn't cooperating with this theory of using finance and bankers to fund a war. He was determined to wage war internally, and if you recall, that was the main reason why he received $15 million for the Louisiana Purchase. So we all heard about how Napoleon was defeated at Waterloo against Wellington. What you probably don't know is that the Rothschilds had a courier service all set up to carry the news back to England. In fact, it was an agent named Roth Worth who had a horse set up in Brussels, just north of where the Waterloo battle occurred, rode the horse over to the port of Austin, then took a boat over to England, and was able to get to Baron Rothschild a full 24 hours, 24 hours, before Wellington's courier, Major Henry Percy, was to report to the Crown. Well, Rothschild walks into the floor of British Exchange, stood by the pillar where he always bought and sold securities, and started selling the English government bonds, just like you saw in the movie. He was selling, and everybody went into a panic, thinking he knew something that happened. Everybody was assuming that Napoleon had defeated Wellington and the French were going to be knocking on the doorstep of England shortly thereafter. Once the panic reached its peak near the end of the day, Rothschild did what? He reversed and he bought. Most accounting historians believe he bought over 95% of all the government bonds. That is control. So you probably heard the famous quote, when there's blood in the streets of Paris, I buy. Well, it was Baron Rothschild that said that, but the actual quote in reference to the Napoleon conflict and Paris was actually, buy when there's blood in the streets, even if the blood is your own. It just simply reinforces this concept of you support both sides of the war, because if profit is your objective, it really doesn't matter who wins. Okay, so that wraps up Federal Reserve Part 1. Be on the lookout for Part 2. Obviously, go to thebrinkmanacademy.com to subscribe and to see all the other videos. Thanks for watching.